Right, let's get going. Let's get going. Okay, Thursday. What have I done there? It's not even Thursday, it's Tuesday. Well, there you go. If that's the only mistake I make today, happy days. Um, right, so, yeah, it's Tuesday, the 10th of July. And um, sterling is the big talking point today. Um, anyone who trades sterling will know that uh, Brexit is just a constant underlying theme. And... Um, and uh, it sort of has been sort of holding back, I think, the possibility of a sterling rally, more, mostly to the fact that I think it's it's a drag on the UK economy, but also it's a drag on the, the prospects of the uh, Bank of England being able to hike rates. Um, and we had sort of signs yesterday that, uh, sorry, not yesterday, last week, that um, Mark Carney was sort of edging towards a more positive outlook, really, sort of saying that Q1, um, the, the uh, Q1 data had been, the Q1 data had been sort of temporary, and um, subsequently we'd seen an improvement in Q2. And so that sort of pretty much set us up for an August rate hike, and that's what the markets were telling us, um, August rate hike potential sort of 70, over 70, maybe even 80% um, probability in terms of um, the uh, short sterling uh, interest rate swaps. Um, but now we've had this this sort of political fallout again um, from uh, on uh, the weekend from uh, Theresa May's supposed unified cabinet position behind her Brexit um, idea. Um, we've had a couple of key resignations. Now, what, are, what does this actually do? Well, ultimately, I, I, I mean, m maybe I look at this um, the wrong way and uh, politics has, has never really been my forte. However, um, I sort of would say that Theresa May has just basically got rid of two main stumbling blocks behind um, delivering her vision of Brexit. Now, Boris Johnson has always been um, a, a problem for her waiting to happen. Um, and he's not um, any longer uh, in the cabinet. Um, and it just depends now, I think, on uh, if you get a, a, any more resignations. Say, for example, Michael Gove, if he stays behind Theresa May now, I mean, Michael Gove, um, knowing how what uh, history he has of loyalty, that's questionable at the best of times. But still, um, there is um, there is a, a suggestion that if, if he stays and sort of other cabinet ministers stay in their positions, and then there's no real reason why Theresa May cannot continue. I mean, if, if they haven't got the numbers to force through a vote of no confidence on her, 48 is the, is the number needed. Uh, and then even then, um, it needs... It needs sort of a, a, a sizable number of um, Conservative MPs to vote against Theresa May in a vote of no confidence um, to really sort of trigger a proper leadership election. Um, uh, they don't have the numbers. So does that actually mean that Theresa May is interestingly more stable today? Now, it's interesting that we have seen Sterling, which coming into the European session was a little bit down, but then it rallied. Um, it was 30 pips down and then rallied to 30 pips up. But the only reason, I say the only reason, one of the reasons why Sterling is now trading down on the day is the fact that we've got, um, we've had uh, weaker than expected industrial uh, production numbers out for the UK and a slightly weaker than expected trade balance. As you can see here, slightly weaker than expected on industrial production. And the trade balance. So we had sterling just unwinding about sort of 30 pips, but it's still outperforming. And it is interesting that we've still got this. And I've got this chart here because sterling yen um, is, a, is a trade that I talked about last time. And I talked about the fact that on a breakout above uh, 146.65 or a closing breakout above 46.65, that completes a little base pattern. That, I think, is still intact. You've still got the uptrend, still got the momentum improvement. Look at that RSI, highest since April. MACD line, similar. Stochastics, strong. This is a trade, I think, still in potential um, for gains. You also look at cable. Yes, it, it had that volatility candle yesterday, and uh, it sort of didn't uh, get that closing breakout above 33.15, but it's still trending higher, still holding on to 32 figure. So I think in the in the very near term, there's going to be some chopping around as the market sort of settles a bit. But I think ultimately, it doesn't really change a great deal, and I and I might be naive in saying that, but yeah, I think it's. Uh, 
It is interesting that um, can, I mean, if if the markets really thought that Sterling, that Theresa May was going to resign uh, or come under, not resign, sorry, was uh, going to be um, losing her leadership, then Sterling would be massively lower because basically it would mean that a Labour Party government. I mean, all in all, it would mean a Labour Party government, and the prospect of a of a of a well, very uncertain Brexit in terms of how Jeremy Corbyn would sort of drive towards Brexit because he is ultimately not particularly pro European Union. So yeah, it's really interesting. But anyway, I've um, been whittering on about Sterling for a while. What else have we got? We've got dollar. Dollar rebounding today. Now this dollar rebound is interesting as well. Because dollar broke down yesterday, 94.20. I mean, 94.17 was the low the other um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, but 94.20 is an old pivot, as you can see here, old pivot, 94.20. And it came back in again. And breaking down below that came alongside the broken uptrend. So subsequently, you'd sort of start to question the sort of longevity of this bull run on the dollar. I think there is... There's more sort of noise to happen. I think having broken that uptrend, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going directly lower. I think we might get a bit of noise within this uptrend or within the, the moves having broken that uptrend. Um, you've sort of rallied back above 94.20 today. I mean, you'd say that's a basis of resistance. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sort of saying it's going to go in one direction. But I think that um, there are moves to, that would suggest that... Uh, there still is the potential for a dollar correction in due course. Now, what we have had is euro dollar back to 1720. That was your breakout the other day, euro dollar 1720. That uh, reaction high that we had in uh, late June becomes supportive on the way back down, also coinciding with this uptrend. Also could talk about the 38.2% Fib retracement level. As well, so this is a key moment, I think, for euro dollar. You lose seventeen twenty, arguably sixteen seventy on the hourly chart, which was that reaction low on Thursday, sixteen seventy. If you lose those two levels, yeah, you are starting to look a little bit more precarious, and you have actually already broken that uptrend on the hourly chart. But as I said, seventeen twenty is sort of a, a basis now I'm looking at. So that's your key level, gold. Gold, that's a disappointment as well. I still say that gold is an in, uh, is a negative correlation to the dollar. Gold has failed to break out above 1261, falling back again. 1250, well, 1250, 60 uh, to the to the tick, pretty much was that reaction low last week, and it's sort of coming back towards that. If you break below 1250 on a closing basis, then yeah, you're looking back at the lows again. But that would also probably mean that euro dollar would be breaking back down again. So this is an interesting moment, I think, for markets generally. Silver is another one I looked at um, last week. I talked about the, the resistance um, of the old support, 1616. Well, lo and behold, it was tested once, pretty much twice, intraday broken yesterday but fallen away today that is a disappointment because that 1616 level came back in as resistance this morning hasn't completed the base pattern uh, on an intraday basis it did but not on a confirming basis not on a closing basis I don't think so we're still playing out this possible um, possibility of a rally and again as I said similar to 1261 on your gold price silver failing at, at uh, 1616 is a disappointment and um, that is a key clearly a key level that we need to look out for so 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 um where are we indices indices looking more positive looking more positive we have seen the, the sterling uh, sorry the FTSE 100 breaking out above 77 uh 7,700, 7,705, look at that. But the resistance comes in at 7,706, 7,705. So this is a key level, um, clearly is a level. You've broken the downtrend channel though, interestingly. And you've got improvement on the momentum, certainly on the stochastics and the MACD lines. MACD lines crossing up as well. The last time MACD lines crossed was the top 
and that called the corrective move. What was the last time we saw the MACD lines crossing higher? Mm, yeah, a couple of indeterminate crosses here, but then the last time it decisively crossed actually did call the bottom. So these crosses on the MACD lines do tend to sort of be fairly predictive on FTSE 100 DAX. Now, uptrend rally back towards 12,600, which is a key level. It is fairly historic as well as a, as a, as a medium-term pivot key level that the market would be looking out for. So 12,600, only sort of 25, 30 ticks away from there now. But look at those MACD lines cross over. Again, a series of indeterminate crosses through February, March. But the last time we did that, it caught the bottom. Accelerating higher on the stochastics. RSI around 50. So this is a key neckline. Sorry, not key, key neckline, key pivot on the DAX. You see it closing above 12,600. I think that really does improve the outlook once again. So these indices on moment, um, are sort of at key crossroads. S&P 500, similar story. Look at that, resistance. I mean, the FIB levels on, Fibonacci retracement levels on the S&P 500 are pretty impressive, I would say. You got 61, uh, sorry, 76.4, pretty much to the tick, it's 2792, and you're only six ticks away from there now, six six points away. Uh, the S&P 500 futures on my list here are pointing out that it's going to be tested probably today. So this is a key key moment for the S&P 500 as well really key support around that 2790, 27, 2800, so the March high, so 2801. So really key moment, I think, for indices generally. So that's what we need to look out for. <laughs> You're welcome, John. <laughs> um, sorry, uh, speaking to a, a man that I was speaking to yesterday about me being a little bit, I don't know, shall we say, um, I don't give uh, the Americans a good light, perhaps, occasionally, and I should do, because they are uh, a large portion of the market and uh, they do drive sentiment a lot, so maybe give them a bit more, less of a rough time. Anyway, um, the DAX is, um, again, 12,600 is key. So looking down the list here, I've got... Um, well, it's, it's interesting that I, I've been pro euro and um, I don't deny that because I still think that there is a, a recovery in the euro in the offing in later in the year. But it's just rolled over, certainly against some of these majors um, on the on the Aussie dollar and the Kiwi dollar. It has just started to sort of break these trends. The euro Canadian also broke an uptrend channel, but interesting that um Euro Canadian is, is rising a touch, but we've got the prospect of a rate hike uh, by the Bank of Canada tomorrow. Um, and that'll be interesting because I, I think that the market is sort of fairly edging towards it. And look at the look at the sort of corrective move we've seen on dollar Canada. So yeah, it's uh I I I'm I'm I think st steering a little bit clearer of dollar Canadian until we see that uh, decision from the Bank of Canada would probably be advisable. But nonetheless, I think that uh, Euro Canadian sort of retreat back to this, this support band is interesting and finding support. But yeah, it's sort of a bit more questionable. But this one here, sterling yen, I really do still have a lot of time for. I mean, generally speaking, I, I look at the yen. Um, I mean, dollar yen, for example break it seems to be breaking out i mean I, I've, again sort of perhaps perhaps this is sort of one of the the, the things the uh, biases that i have is that i've sort of been looking at dolly yen perhaps not in enough uh, positive light um because you look at dolly yen and the, and the, it, the main issue i've had with dolly yen is this macd like these macd lines, lines here not going anywhere and that sort of has let left me a little bit sort of cold as in terms of how this rally's gone however it has broken back out again today above that uh, 1115 level 1140 is sort of the key may high and it looks like you're going to test that now and if you take this 
take this as a flag pattern you could measure that and then sort of extend that higher from the low and it gives you sort of 1190 12 figure as your target so that's that would certainly suggest 1140 comes under pressure but the MACD lines, I still want to see those MACD lines coming higher. But the RSI backer of 60 is positive. And this all plays into a weaker yen. Now, yen weakness, I think, is ongoing. The only thing that's sort of preventing yen weakness, I think, is the fact that you've got these sort of bouts of uh, safe haven moves. But again, look at euro yen. Euro has not been doing all that well, but breaking out against the yen above that, um, that June high. 30 35 breaking out above that so you'd be looking at sort of and that's confirmed on the rsi confirmed on the MACD, like and the confirmed on the stochastic so that's a pretty good break that's a pretty good move so you'd be looking at the the euro yen now finding support between 29 and 30 figure i would say if you saw another higher low in that you'd say that that's a pretty good level so that takes me back to sterling yen Again, I, I'm, I just sort of look at the fact that sterling hasn't f fallen just completely off out of um, out of bed on the back of this political um, sort of uh, these political moves in the UK. And I still think it's OK. I mean, d sterling yen still holding up on the breakout, still trending higher, still got the positive momentum. And again. This is again plays into this weaker yen, weaker yen also on Aussie yen. I'm already long on Aussie yen, um, which is going OK um, still. Um, and you're back above 82.60. So uh, that is uh, that is a positive. It can hold hold that break. You sort of look back towards the highs of the range again and breaking out. You could argue this is a small base pattern. It gives you where well, you measure that from the low. 80.70 to the sort of breakout 82.10 that gives you what 140 ticks so that gives you 83.50 so there is upside still to be seen here now uh, just quickly show you um, I am long on Aussie yen but equally I'm short on oil and that is something that is a little bit of a bane for me because it looked as though it was topping out really did look as though it was rolling over and sort of that doji candle there negative candle there and then subsequently breaking intraday but again this sort of probably teaches me a lesson um trading in front of breaks that have not been confirmed um i would say it's a pro probably a fairly reasonable lesson to learn here because the market did look corrective, but there was no real confirmation. We hadn't had sell signals on the uh, on the stochastics or the RSI, which would have been sort of closing back below 60. Stochastics didn't close back below 80, and you didn't get a closing breach of the support. So, tra so trading just, I mean, I, I went short just under that low of uh, 72.50, which I think I had 72.40. Uh, yes, indeed, it was seventy-two forty, um, and I, I got I got filled and went a little bit lower, and then rallied intraday, and uh, I've uh, been done a little bit by that. So, yeah. Um, however, with all that said, it still sort of isn't really decisively trending, and it sort of looks fairly range bound on the medium. Oh, sorry, on the hourly chart touch higher today um half a percent would you say that's definitely going to be sort of under pressure um for a breakout well you've still got strong momentum so arguably the the sort of the aspects of my trade that i put on short of not really still there you'd still you'd be trading on hope rather than expectation um however yesterday's doji today's marginal gains it's sort of 50 it's not it, i mean it's not really a great great short position for me to be running um i haven't put a stop on so i will do now um and what i would do is that reaction high there 74 uh 
what was it, 74.90? No, it was the, this reaction high, which is the lower reaction high, 74.80. So if you stick it at 74.90, so stop loss. Modifying order, 74.90. There you go. Still got a chance of it, and as I said, the, the momentum of the rally has, has sort of waned definitely, and there is still the possibility of um, of this trade sort of succeeding. But yeah, you, you wouldn't really want it to go below that lower high, really. If it if it started to go above that, then yeah, you'd think that that's going to be a trade that's going to be uh, ruined. So yeah, there we go. Um, my mistake, and uh, I have to learn from that as a result. Um, yeah, I, I do sort of um, do. I mean, I, I see that John near uh, in medium term. Uh, John saying that uh, I think oil is long, or long is better positioning. Um, it seems as though fundamentally that is the case. I was just sort of playing it from a momentum pers uh, perspective, whereby the market looked tired. Um, but it's uh, it picked up again, so there we go. Anyway, um, okay, so where are we? Um, we are pretty much there. Um, so a few a few sort of ideas for you, um, and uh, yeah, a little bit of a longer one today, but I hope it hasn't uh, distracted from your entertainment. But I will speak to you again on Thursday. Thank you.